in this model, we will be discussing chapter number one, the chemical world from our textbook. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to recognize that chemicals make up virtually everything we come into contact with in our world. Or also, you will be able to recognize that all things are made of atoms and molecules. And finally, you will identify and understand the key characteristics of the scientific method. Observation, the formulation of hypothesis, the testing of hypothesis by experiment, and the formulation of laws and theories. So, let's try to define chemistry. Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson, and in this What Is video, we're going to try to answer the question, what is chemistry? Chemistry is the science of matter, both its properties and how it reacts with other matter. Chemistry is a physical science, which means it focuses on things that are not living. Instead, chemists and other physical scientists study the laws of nature. Chemistry is considered to be one of the fundamental sciences because everything in the universe obeys these natural laws. Chemistry is also sometimes called the central science because principles of chemistry intertwine with other sciences, especially biology, physics, and math. Since chemistry is a science, chemists use the scientific method, a specific set of steps designed to test answers to a problem when they do their experiments. Chemists seek to answer the question, what's it made of? The answer to this question helps us understand how a substance will react under different conditions, such as changes in temperature, light, and pressure. Chemists are also interested in how atoms join through chemical bonds and how easily they can be pulled apart. When most people think of chemistry, they think of elements, substances made up of a single kind of atom. As of 2012, chemists have isolated 118 different elements. These elements are organized by their properties on a figure called the periodic table. People have been practicing chemistry for thousands of years. Famous chemists include Marie Curie, known for her research on radioactivity, and John Dalton, whose work is fundamental to our understanding of the atom. Chemistry is used everywhere, every day. It's used by pharmacists to create new medicines, by police and detectives to solve crimes, and even by engineers to make the computer chips powering the device you're using to watch this video. So we can define chemistry as the science that seeks to understand what matter does by studying what atoms and molecules do. As was mentioned by Emerald in the video, chemistry is a branch of physical science that studies the composition, structure, properties, and change of matter. If you took a minute and look around you, everything is composed of molecules and atoms. Virtually everything around you is composed of chemicals. Chemistry has five major branches. The first one is analytical chemistry, which uses qualitative and quantitative observation to identify and measure the physical and chemical properties of substances. In a sense, all chemistry is analytical. The second is physical chemistry, which combines chemistry with physics. Physical chemists study how matter and energy interact. Thermodynamics and quantum mechanics are two of the important branches of physical chemistry. The third one is one of my favorite, organic chemistry. Specifically studies compounds that contain the element of carbon. Carbon has many unique properties that allow it to form complex chemical bonds and very large molecules. In organic chemistry, it's number four. And this one studies materials such as metals and gases that do not have carbon as part of their makeup. And finally, my favorite, biochemistry, which is the one that studies chemical processes that occur within living organisms, including the human body. So let's talk about atoms. Atoms are very small. They're considered the building blocks of matter. We can think of atoms as Lego pieces. All these Lego pieces are of different colors and shapes, as well as the atoms. There are atoms of hydrogen, oxygen, silver, magnesium, 
Each of these atoms has specific characteristics that makes them unique and different from each other. There are people that love to play with Legos and create very interesting things. For example, here we have a replica of the Excalibur Hotel from Las Vegas, and also a replica from the Sydney Opera House. Both of them you can find it in Legoland in California. In the same way, chemists love to combine atoms to create molecules. Here we have a red sphere that is going to represent an atom of oxygen and uh, the, a white sphere that is going to represent the atom of hydrogen. We can combine different atoms, for example, one atom of oxygen with two atoms of hydrogen to produce one molecule of water, H2O. So we have two hydrogens and one oxygen to produce that molecule of water. Atoms and molecules are tiny particles that compose all common matter. The atoms are bound together to form several different types of molecules. Chemical bonds are the attachment that hold atoms together. Let's take a look at the following example. The soda pulp, soda pulp is composed of small molecules which are at the same time composed of atoms. A single drop of soda pop contains about 1 billion trillion atoms. Soda pop is a mixture, carbon dioxide molecules, water molecules, and other substances that contribute to the flavor and color of that soda. So here, for example, as we mentioned before, the red sphere represents oxygen, the white spheres represent hydrogen. So we have two hydrogens here, one oxygen, this is H2O, also, you can see here in this um, uh, representation of the soda, molecules of water. But also, we have another molecule that has two red spheres that are oxygen, two oxygens, and one black sphere. Uh, the black sphere is going to represent carbon. Okay, Carbon is going to be represented by the black sphere. So we have carbon and two oxygen, CO2. So this is a molecule of carbon dioxide, and also the carbon dioxide, as we mentioned before, is part of that mixture that um, uh, combines with water to produce that soda pop. So maybe you have at one point wondered, why does the soda pop fizz? Or what is inside the bubbles in a glass of soda? Well, let's see if atoms and molecules can help us to answer those questions. A can of soda is a chemical mixture. The soda consists primarily of sugar, water, and carbon dioxide. The characteristics of sugar molecules produce the sensation of sweetness on our taste buds. The molecules important to fission are carbon dioxide and water. So let's talk a little bit about these two molecules. Carbon dioxide. Here we have a sphere representation of the molecule of CO2, CO2 carbon dioxide. <clears throat> As I mentioned before, the red sphere, sphere represents the oxygen, <clears throat> the black one represents the carbon. So carbon dioxide molecule consists of three atoms, one carbon and two oxygen held together in a straight line by chemical bonds. The characteristics of carbon dioxide molecules make carbon dioxide a gas at room temperature. Here we have the representation of water. The uh, white spheres here represent hydrogen. The red one represents oxygen. So we have there the H2O. So the water molecule consists of three atoms, one oxygen, as we mentioned, the red one, and two hydrogen that are the, uh, the white spheres. But the together, but rather than being straight like the carbon dioxide molecules, the water molecule is bent. The characteristics of water molecules make water a liquid at room temperature. So the question is, what is happening in a soda can? Under pressure, gases carbon dioxide molecules are forced to remain mixed with liquid water molecules in a sealed 
container. When the can is open and the pressure is released, carbon dioxide molecules escape out of the soda mixture, creating those bubbles. Here we can see a closer representation of the molecules of CO2 creating those bubbles and escaping to the surface of the liquid and that is how the fizz and the bubbles are produced in a soda can. As I mentioned before, there is nothing you can hold or touch that is not made of chemicals. Chemicals make up virtually everything we come into contact with. For example, here we have a glass of soda. Here we have molecules of water, H2O, oxygen, and two hydrogen. This one, carbon dioxide. This is a molecule of um, atom of carbon and two of oxygen. And maybe this one is one of the glucose, okay, carbon, oxygen, and also hydrogen. And this is another compound that also is part of decomposition of mixture of the soda. Also, the lead that we use in the this type of pencils, they are of graphite. This basically is uh, the carbon, okay? So this is also atoms of carbon. And here we have a representation of the DNA that is part of the cells that are in the skin, okay, and in the whole body. And also this molecule is composed of different atoms of carb as carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen, okay? So that's why basically every ordinary thing that we are exposed to is composed of chemical compounds. Definitely, when people think about chemical compounds, they think of them as if they were dangerous, poison, or pollutants. And for some of them, it is true. But also, there are a lot of ordinary things that are chemical compounds too, and they are not dangerous. For example, the air we breathe, the water we drink, toothpaste, Tylenol, and toilet paper. So, chemistry explains the properties and behavior of chemicals by helping us understand the molecules that compose them. So a good definition of chemistry is the science that tries to understand how matter behaves by studying how atoms and molecules behave. Notice that Howard can take any topic and use it to remind you that he went to space? Interesting hypothesis. Let's apply the scientific method, perform an experiment. Okay. Hey, Howard, any thoughts on where we should get dinner? Anywhere but the space station. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on a good day, dinner was a bag full of meatloaf. <laughs> but hey, you don't go there for the food, you go there for the view. <laughs> Fascinating. Let me see if I can duplicate the result. Howard, I've always thought the lemon was an underrated fruit. Care to weigh in? Not really. <laughs> oh, well. You know, people say the Soyuz capsule is a lemon, but... <laughs> yeah, but hey, that baby got me to space and back. <laughs> As we saw in the video, Leonard and Sheldon were applying the scientific method to prove an observation from Leonard that Howard used any topic to remind everyone that he went to space. So they did a first experiment where Leonard asked him what he want for dinner, and Howard's answer proved that the hypothesis of, of Leonard was correct. But then Sheldon tried to validate it using another experiment or question, and it was true. The same way, most of us apply the scientific method on a daily basis and always start with a question. What will happen if I add a little bit of garlic to the mashed potatoes? Or with, or with which type of gas is my car more efficient with? Or what route will be the fastest to go to work? You start with an observation, then you establish a hypothesis about what you think is going to happen. And finally, you apply an experiment to see if you're right or wrong. In a simple way, that's the scientific method. Chemists 
used the scientific method, a way of learning that emphasized observation and experimentation, to produce knowledge as the result of the senses. The scientific method is composed by four parts. Number one, observations that involve measuring or observing some aspect of nature. Number two, the hypothesis, that are tentative interpretation of the observations. Number three, are laws, that summarize the results of a large number of observations. And number four, is the theories, that are models that explain and give the underlying causes for observations and laws. There is a fifth component that is really important in the scientific method, and this one is the experiments. Hypothesis, laws, and theories must be tested and validated by experiment. If hypotheses are not confirmed, they are revised and tested through further experimentation. Some observations can be made with a naked eye. Other observations emerge from experiments that rely on the use of sensitive instrumentations. Observations usually involve the measurement or description of some aspect of the physical world. The hypothesis is a tentative interpretation or explanation of the observations. A good hypothesis is falsifiable, which means that further testing has the potential to prove it wrong. Hypotheses are tested by experiments, highly controlled observations designed to validate or invalidate hypotheses. The results of an, of an experiment may confirm my hypothesis or show it to be mistaken in some way. The hypothesis may have to be modified or discarded and replaced by an alternative. The new or revised hypothesis must also be tested through further experimentation. A number of similar observations lead to the development of a scientific law. A brief statement that synthesizes past observations and predicts future ones. An example of a scientific law is the law of conservation of mass, which was Lavoisier, which state, in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So this is an example of a law from the scientific method. One or more well-established hypothesis may form the basis for a scientific theory. Theories provide a broader and deeper explanation for observations and laws. Also, they are models of the way nature is. The theories often predict behavior that extends well beyond the observations and laws on which they are founded. Here we have an overview of the scientific method. As we mentioned before, you start, you start most of the time with an observation or a question, and this one, uh, some, uh, sometimes it can go to establish a hypothesis. This hypothesis needs to be tested with experiments, and this experiment will confirm or will, um, will uh, set, tell that the hypothesis is wrong, so you need to revise. And if you need to revise, you need to test it again, okay, until you confirm that this hypothesis is right, and then those hypotheses can turn into a theory, and that theory also must be tested with experiments. Maybe they will confirm or they'll be wrong, so you need to revise that theory, and if, when you revise that one, you need to test it again until you confirm that that, that theory is right. Also, those observations can lead to a, a, a law, and this law also needs to be tested, with experiments and those experiments will confirm that that law is right or that that law is wrong and if it's wrong you need to revise that law once it is revised you need to test it again until you confirm that that law is right and from that law you can go to hypothesis and eventually to establish a theory so if a law hypothesis or theory is inconsistent with the findings of an experiment 
it must be revised and new experiments must be conducted to test the revisions. Over time, poor theories are eliminated and good theories, those consistent with experiments, remain. An example of a theory obtained by the scientific method is the atomic theory by John Dalton. Dalton explained the law of conservation of mass by proposing that all matter was composed of small indestructible particles called atoms. Dalton's theory was a model of the physical world. It went beyond the laws and observation of the time to explain these laws and observations. Established theories with strong experimental supports are the most powerful pieces of scientific knowledge. People unfamiliar with science, science sometimes says that it's just a theory, as if theories were mere speculations. Well-tested theories are as close to truth as we get in science. The idea that all matter is made of atoms is a theory with 200 years of experimental evidence to support it. Modern technology provides recent images such as this one of atoms themselves. This image shows the kanji characters of four atoms, written with individual iron atoms on top of copper surface. So, how you can succeed in this course of chemistry? Chemistry requires curiosity and imagination. You must want to know the why of things. Chemistry also requires calculation. Quantification involves measurement as part of observation. It is one of the most important tools in science. Quantification allows you to, specif to specify the difference precisely. For example, two samples of water may feel equally hot to your hand, but when you measure the temperatures, you may find that one is 40 degrees and the other one is 44. Chemistry requires commitment. You must do your work regularly and carefully. If you do, you will succeed. You will be rewarded by seeing a whole new world, the world of molecules and atoms. To have success in this class, you must be curious and imaginative. You must be willing to do calculations. You must be committed to learning the material and also Please do your homework. So a short review for this chapter. We talk about uh, matter and molecule and define chemistry as the science that tries to understand what matter does by understanding what molecules do. We also talk about the scientific method, a tool you've been able to use and also is an important tool for chemists. We define the different component components of its of it, observation, hypothesis, laws, theories, and experiments. And finally, we mention an example of a scientific law, the law of conservation of mass, and a scientific theory, the atomic theory. So this will be all for chapter number one.